This is our final circuits project. The goal of this project was to create circuits that could act as both transmitters and receivers for audio signals inputted from both microphone and auxiliary cords. We were able to successfully make these transmitting and receiving circuits to act as a two-way communication system, and we were able to transmit and receive at up to 15 feet, and we were able to get decibel readings of over 70 decibels measured two feet from our speaker. So this is the schematic representing um, our battery voltage split. So essentially the output of the op amp is grounded, which causes the negative input to also be grounded. And the voltage of the negative input and the positive input are equal. So the positive input is also grounded and the positive input is connected to the central node. And using equal resistors, the uh, voltage will split to positive 4.5 volts and negative 4.5 volts. This is a schematic representing the inputs and the summing operational amplifier. So inputs are taken from a microphone and an aux cord, and then they're fed into a volume control, and this volume control will be shown next. Um, next, the signals are fed through capacitors, which prevent feedback into the inputting devices. The signals are then fed into a negative feedback op-amp, which will combine the two signals into one. This is the schematic for our volume control in our circuit, which is the same for all of the volume controls in our circuit. This is an inverting op amp where the gain is the ratio of the resistance of the potentiometer over the 1.3 uh, kilo ohm resistor. So as the resistance of the potentiometer is decreased to zero, that will decrease the output to zero so that there's no signal from this component. This is the schematic for the bias T configuration in our transmitting circuit. So the laser needs to be supplied a voltage, but we don't want the AC and DC currents to interfere with each other. So the capacitor blocks the DC signal and the inductor likewise blocks the AC signal so that they don't interfere with each other. And then the 51 ohm resistor just ensures that there's not too much current running into our laser. This is our oscilloscope reading at the point of the laser, and this is while inputting a 1 kilohertz sine wave through our aux cord input from a YouTube video. This is the schematic for the first operational amplifier and the filters in our receiver circuit. So the laser hits the photodiode and the signal can be seen across the component. That signal is inputted into the operational amplifier, which amplifies the signal. The signal is then passed through the high pass filter, which only allows high frequencies through, and then the low pass filter, which only allows low frequencies through. Together, these filters are called a band pass filter. This is our oscilloscope reading at the point of the photodiode. As you can see, the signal is slightly smaller than it was at the transmitting point of the laser, which is why this signal will need to be amplified. In order to have a loud enough sound coming out of the speaker, the signal needs to be amplified a second time. So again, we just use a negative feedback op amp, which will amplify the signal. This is the schematic for our volume control and speaker in the receiving circuit. So the signal is fed into an inverting op amp where once again the gain is equal to the ratio of the resistance of the potentiometer over the 1.3 kilo ohm resistor. So as the resistance of the potentiometer goes to zero, the gain will also go to zero so there will be no noise from the speaker. The output of the op amp is then fed into the speaker. This is our oscilloscope reading at the point of the speaker. As you can see, it's been amplified from the previous reading at the point of the photodiode.
Yeah. What, what won't work? The laser won't turn on. Can I, can I see it? Can we do that? Sure. <laughs> Put it down here, I can see. I didn't do that. I just did. 